What is going on, you guys? It is The Talking Sasquatch, and it's great to have you back. Now, today's video is something I've wanted to get into for a while now. It's actually gonna be on the HackRF with Portapack. This thing is so cool. I actually 3D printed the case for it, obviously. Uh, let's take a better look at it. Obviously, it's got a uh, 3D printed case that I designed with the Squatch up there. Pack RF with some transparent kind of neon yellow in the back. It's really cool. Clear back. It's got holographic little thing on there, which is really cool. If we turn it on, here we go. We've got... Oh, wait, hold on. Uh, sorry, guys. Don't want to get banned in Canada. Just a second. Okay. There we go, much better. We've got the custom background on my Mayhem firmware. Really cool, and actually even went ahead and printed out the SMA covers on the bottom, you know, because why not? So I'm not gonna lie, the reason why I haven't actually done this video yet is because I don't know how to use it. So we're gonna be doing an entire Hack RF series, starting with today, Hack RF 100. Basically just, un not unboxing, because it's already out of the box, but what to do on day one, what the antennas do, what the different parts of the Hack RF do, and what some of the icons and stuff are for. We'll run you through the entire process of updating the firmware and actually a couple different really cool ways, uh, where to get some cool files for it, and really what to do with it to get it at least ready to start playing with. Hey, this video has been a long time coming, but I am psyched to be doing this, and I'm gonna learn everything right along with you. So let's go. All right, so first things first, a bit of a disclaimer. I know I say these things with Flipper Zero stuff, but with the Hack RF, it's actually even more important. You need to be very careful what you're transmitting on. It is extremely easy, even accidentally, to transmit something on a frequency that you are not allowed to do. Especially just starting off, I highly recommend until you really start to understand what you're doing and what you're trying to do to not even mess with the transmit commands at all. Just stay out of that part of the software. I mean, yeah, we'll get there eventually, it's one step at a time, but for now, let's just leave it for later. Now, I did get mine on AliExpress. I'll have a link down below. You can also order them on Amazon, Hacker Warehouse. There's a ton of places. Now, it's actually really beneficial if you order one from your own country because they will have to go through customs. And at least in America, I've heard about these things getting taken in customs. And in Canada, it's gonna be a question coming up. So I did order the bundle that had the most antennas because what, more is more, right? Well, I've been told that some of the antennas aren't as useful as others, but I might as well go through all the antennas that I got and give you a little short description and kind of what they're used for. Now, the first thing out of the box is actually a micro USB cable. It's used for plugging the HackRF into the computer or to charge it. This one says it's by LG, but looking at it kind of closely, I don't know. I've got my doubts as to whether or not it's an actual LG cable, but... I mean, it's a micro USB cable. They all suck. Who cares? So the first antenna we'll talk about is actually this big chungus flappy boy right here, which is effectively a 2.4 gigahertz. I mean, it goes all the way up to 5 gigahertz, but for the most part, we're going to be using this on 2.4 gigahertz. If you're wondering why it looks so familiar, it's actually the same antenna that goes on the AWOX chungus board. And the first time I saw one, this is where it was. Same antenna. Really cool. The next antenna we'll talk about is the small curly boy. Now, this little guy transmits on 40 to 860 megahertz. Most of the time, you'll probably be hanging out in the 433 megahertz range, which controls things like, you know, inexpensive lights, garages, any of the relatively inexpensive lights like this little guy right here that controls the light over there off and then on that would be in the 433 megahertz range now we have the large curly boy now this bouncy guy goes from anywhere from 700 to 2700 megahertz now this guy's good for things like mobile communications like lte or long-term evolution if you're curious what that stood for now next one is this big heavy guy right here which has the same frequency range as uh, the long springy boy but it's actually got a lot more power so much more powerful antenna and then that brings us to our last antenna which is the silver telescoping guy this one goes from 40 megahertz to 6 gigahertz. Now, it is important to note, this is kind of the jack of all trades of antennas, um, and you should actually be changing the length of it based on the frequency that you're trying to use it for. In general, if you use another antenna that's made to work specifically with the band that you're trying to use, it's going to work better than this guy. But again, jack of all trades, it works for pretty much anything. Now, it also came with this male-to-male -male SMA adapter that goes with this amplifier. Now, this little amplifier right here is made from 50 megahertz all the way up to six gigahertz, and it's supposed to give about a 20 decibel gain which is, you know, pretty good. Now, I have been warned that the radio on the actual Hack RF is a little sensitive, so I'm honestly terrified of plugging it into my uh, my actual Hack RF, so I'll probably wait for a while to do that. But what I won't wait a while for is this segue to today's sponsor. 
PCB Way. PCB Way is your one stop shop for anything that has to do with PCBs. PCB Way can help you design, create, and assemble almost any PCB for almost any project. They're actually currently working on a flex PCB for me right now. It's so cool. Now, don't forget, just because they're called PCB Way doesn't mean that that's all they do. They also do 3D printing, injection molding, and sheet metal fabrication. On top of all that, they've also got a module store where you can pick up anything from Raspberry Pi to small TFT screens to sensors and more. That's where I got my Miniware ES15 and my Miniware TS1C. So check out PCBWay.com for a free instant quote. Thank you so much again for your continued support and let's get back at it. All right, so let's do a really quick anatomy lesson. So of course up here is your top SMA or sub miniature version A plug. Yeah, super awesome name, but that's where you're gonna screw in your antenna. That's it. Whenever you're running something like this, especially when you're scanning with it, it's always best to have an antenna plugged in. So I'm gonna go ahead, screw my antenna in. If I do anything stupid, hopefully I don't damage it. You know, maybe it's a superstition, but be careful. So up top is this happy looking face right there. Oh, no. So it's got two buttons. The button on the left is actually gonna be to reboot. Uh, the one on the right is DFU mode. So this is actually how you recover firmware if anything goes sideways. It's also got a little happy smile there. That's where oh, SD card goes. If you want to take a look at the bottom here, we have the uh, mini jack. It's actually a headphone jack you can plug audio into. My version doesn't have a speaker in it yet, but you can better believe it will at some point. And also right there is micro USB. That's how you charge it and also how you plug it into your computer. You'll also notice on the bottom too, these other two SMA plugs right there. I've got aqua colored little um, SMA covers that I printed. And these are actually for an external clock. Now, basically, if you're gonna hook up a bunch of different hack RFs together, you'll need an external clock because they all need to run at exactly the same timing. Now, the hack RF does have its own internal clock, just like a watch does. You know, the watch has got a little quartz thing inside it, and that's what really keeps the timing on it. The hack RF does it itself internally, but if you wanna connect multiple ones, they need to be synchronized, and that's what those ports are for. Will I ever use that? Probably not. Can you take them off? Yeah, if you wanted to, but you know, it's up to you. Don't let them bother you. All right, then we have some more obvious stuff. We have the five buttons right here, which are up, down, left, and right. And the middle button is basically select. We've also got the knob right here, which is kind of cool. It's got little clicks, it's a detented knob. Um, I put on a knob from my Gibson Les Paul because I think it looks really cool and I had an extra knob. Uh, you can 3D print your own knobs. It's it's pretty much a really similar, like this is the stock one that came with it. And you know, it's just, a knob, really. They're easy to make, easy to replace. All right, now that we've gotten past Anatomy 101 for the Hack RF, we can get into the real meat and potatoes of it and start doing the firmware. Who says meat and potatoes? I don't. I, I don't write scripts, and sometimes I feel like I should. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is actually update the firmware. We're gonna get some files that we want to have on the SD card, and we're gonna get some extra files that they don't necessarily give you, but our good friend Rocket God's got you covered. So first things first, let's actually take the SD card out, and you'll notice it is recessed. You can't take this out right now without something. So we're just gonna grab a knife, which I'm sure is the safest way to do this. Give it the old poke. And now I think I can get it out. Ugh. Ah, oof, almost dropped it, but I still got it. Now let's go ahead and plug this into the computer and hop over to the desktop. All right, so I'm going to show you two ways of doing the firmware. The first way, we're going to use the HackRF itself to get it all set up. The second way, we're actually going to use the web flasher. So that's going to be fun, too. So first things first, we're going to hop on over to the GitHub for the Mayhem firmware. Link down below or just Google it. It's really easy to find. But once we get in there, we're going to go to releases and we're going to download a couple of files that are around here. Now, the two that we want are the firmware and copy to SD card. The copy to SD card has some assets on there like maps that we're really going to want to use. So just go ahead and click them. We're going to download those to the desktop. Here's save one and then save the second one. All right. And then we're just going to extract both of those extracts and then the other one extracts give it a second and uh, that should finish up all right so actually since we're already here let's go to sd card so these are the uh the copy to sd card files open this up and we're just going to control a we're going to copy all of these and drop all of these down here now this sd card already has my uh my splash screen that i already set but that's it that's all that's on there so we're just going to go ahead and paste this it shouldn't take too long. You can actually, and I can show you later, plug the Portapack 
into your PC and enable being able to write onto the SD card through the HackRF. However, it's a bit slower. This is the faster way to do it. So I recommend just waiting for this. <laughs> Hey, we're done. Cool. So now actually we can go right directly into this firmware folder right there. And that's actually going to have firmware in it. So we're going to go over to the Mayhem 1.9.1. We're going to find the bin file right here. We're just going to go ahead and overwrite that. Replace. Now, I'm assuming it's probably the exact same file. Anytime you want to update the firmware, if you already have the SD card files, all you got to do is download the firmware part and then we'll paste that into the firmware folder. Easy peasy. So let's close this and this. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to navigate over to our friend's Rocket God's GitHub and get some files from him. Here we are, which is GitHub. Uh, it's Rocket God's GitHub for the HackRF treasure chest. So we're not going to be using everything for here for the moment, but we are going to download the zip and we're going to grab some of these files. There we go. We can close the window and wait for this to finish downloading. Two very boring minutes later. Now that that's finished, we're just going to go and extract all just like we did before. And again, it's going to take a second. We know we're in no rush, but we're going to decompress a whole bunch of files. One week later. And we're done. So we'll open up those files, open up the treasure chest. All we're really going to, whoop, I lost them. Come back, friend. Um, all we're really going to do for today is I'm going to keep clicking the wrong thing. That's fine. We're going to grab the replay attacks. We're just going to control C to copy those. We're going to go back into the SD card for the hack RF and we're going to paste those files. Remember that waiting we just did? We're going to do it again. Again, we're not. We got nowhere to be. We're all good. Hey, now we're done. We have everything that we need on our SD card, which is awesome. So yeah, let me uh, flip a camera around so you can see the hack RF. We'll update the firmware and yeah, one step further. All right, here we go. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and take the SD card and reinsert it here. It actually goes in upside down, just like seems like everything else like this and grab our knife. Ugh, give it the old poke. Careful, careful. There we go. Clicked in, ready to go. Now you'll notice that the background on this changed. So to get off of this screen, just press the button there. And let me change my exposure so we can see what's going on. That's a little bit better. So actually, real quick, I'll show you how to change your background image. I'm just going to go into Utilities. I'm going to go into File Manager. And then if we go all the way down here, we'll find where I put my splash, which is actually squash.bmp. Press the middle button. Press the right button. Now that's going to set it to our splash screen. So if we press the dial here twice, it'll turn it off. If we press the dial here one time, it'll turn it on. And here should be our splash screen. Nice. All right, so now to update firmware, this is super easy. We're just gonna go down to utilities again. And then we have a flash utility that sits right there. And then you can see there's our firmware. So press the middle button one more time and it's gonna ask you wanna replace the firmware. We do, so yeah. This takes 15 seconds. The lights on the top will be flashing. You can see them flashing away right there. And you know, again, a little more patience and this will be done. Hey, we're done already. It's that easy. Now, if you don't know what version of the firmware you're running, it says right down there. So easy peasy. Now we are on the latest firmware. Now, as I said before, I'm not going to really get into how to use this right now. We're just setting it up, but I might as well at least show you what this top menu does or the top bar does. So the title bar, the first one where it says mayhem, this just brings up some information about the devs, which is cool. Now here we have a screenshot button so we can actually take a screenshot of it and it will save into our screenshots folder. We have sleep mode, which is kind of nice. If you're say you got it plugged in and it's charging, you can select sleep mode. It'll turn the screen off. If you press any button, it'll bring it back. Then we have stealth mode. And what stealth mode does is basically if you're transmitting, it will turn the screen off. So it won't look like it's doing anything. Um, the transmit LED on top, that will actually blink one per sec uh, once per second so that you know it's still working, but it'll make it a lot more stealth mode. Now, the next few options are things you probably won't be doing or using. Um, basically, the frequency button, you can change the frequency offset if you're using a powered antenna or anything like that, which again, we're not using, so we're not going to get into it too much. The next one is going to toggle the DC power for the antenna. So if you have a powered amplifier or something like that, then you know, you'll know you use that selection. Again, we're not going to worry about that too much. The same thing with the next one, which is the status of the external clock. So if we were using these two little guys down here for an external clock, that would turn green. Next to that, we have mute, 
So basically you can mute the headphone or the speaker if you have one. And of course the next one over there is just the SD card status. So yeah, basically that's got the whole thing working. We can use it from here. We've got everything we need, except I'm gonna show you one other way to update the firmware using uh, Web Flasher. And that's actually how they're doing the nightly builds of Mayhem. So let's uh, hop over the desktop, take a look at that. All right, so now all we have to do is head over to hackrf.app and that opens up their Web Flasher. I absolutely love Web Flashers. Ever since lab.flipper.net, FZ Flasher, and all of the you know online flashing tools for Flipper Zero, I absolutely fell in love with how easy these things are. So the fact that the Mayhem firmware has an online flasher, I think is absolutely fantastic. So just like always, we'll just go ahead and click connect device. We see it right here, COM15, click connect. And it's actually gonna show us the live screen right now, which works pretty good. It's a little slow, I'll admit that. So you can see, yeah, it's a bit slow. So it's not gonna be exactly like, you know, how I show stuff with QFlipper. But again, this works for what we're doing. But what's also fun about that is if we scroll down, we can go to manage firmware and then update to latest nightly release. Very, very fun. So let's let's go ahead and do that. We'll click, click the button. Actually, no, it's not. Looks like it failed. Um, nightly builds. These things aren't always the most stable. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. If anybody knows what's up, let me know down in the comments. Editing Sasquatch here. So the reason why the web updater didn't work is because in order to make it work, all you have to do is install a nightly bin, but the manual way that we did, you know, just for updating the firmware. As soon as you do that the first time, the nightly updater will work. So that's what's going on. Thank you, Zardos, for that little tidbit of information. Luckily, nothing really bad happened. Just unplug it and we should come right back up. No problem. Oh, while I'm down here, let me show you another cool thing. We'll plug it back into our computer. And this is what I had mentioned before. If we go into utilities, we can go to, oh, yep, that's it. SD over USB, hit run. And then, yeah, that's gonna pop up right on my computer just as a USB drive. So if you wanna transfer files that way, you can. It's probably, I'm not 100%, it's probably over SPI, so it's probably really slow. But it's a good way to connect it to your computer. So yeah, that's the absolute basics on how to get your Hack RF with Portapack ready to go. Now, do you have to do all this? No, of course not. But all those SD card assets are gonna make your your HackRF a lot more capable, and obviously the latest and greatest firmware is always good to have. We're in it together now, so we're gonna learn how to use this thing, I promise. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. It helps me out a ton. We'll catch you next time.